We've been engaging over the past, gosh, how long has it been, Daniel, since you sort of started convening all of us for the Blockchain Infrastructure Working Group? Yeah, I think I think we had, you and I had initial conversations maybe December of 2020. Um, and then that was an interesting initiative. <laughs> And then I think we formalized something maybe closer to spring of this year. Yeah. Um, and so yeah. it's been definitely a couple of months. That the sounds right. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. Project yeah, Eleonora. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Gre Greta Thunberg's middle name. <laughs> That's what we had called it initially. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, totally. Well, um, so we've been at it for a little while, it, you, sort of before the hype cycle that Elon's tweeting kicked off <laughs> around th the negatives of Bitcoin and maybe crypto more broadly and maybe the, the positive potential. And everybody up here on stage who's a speaker, I think, has some pretty deep um, engagement and credibility on multiple fronts in the blockchain world broadly and in the climate space specifically. And so we sort of wanted to just convene and have a, a little bit of a public conversation to invite people into the types of things that we're considering um, as we're engaging in this working group to ask really fundamentally, how can, um, how can blockchain fulfill its potential in really leading climate finance and climate action instead of uh, being considered sort of a, 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 a liability in unifying our action as global humanity against, uh, you know, maybe we're not against anything, but towards a healthier planet. So that's my kind of framing. Um, maybe I'll pass the baton on to you, Daniel, just to, I, I think it'd be fantastic for folks to just hear with your hat as sort of a special projects lead at F2 pool and your role at, at as protocol, uh, on doing protocol at um, Stakefish, just like why have you been bringing us all together as an infrastructure provider in the space and why are you stoked about this? And then maybe we can weave in um, Joseph and Joshua and just sort of go from there. Sure, yeah. And thank you so much, Gregory, for organizing um, this. So I... As Gregor mentioned, I, I lead special projects at F2 Pool, a Bitcoin mining pool, a, a proof of work mining pool, and then uh, I'm a protocol special at Stakefish, a POS validator. Um, I think, um, I, gu I guess, a lot of this had been kind of prompted by what we had been kind of seeing from like the the traditional, the traditional world, taking a look at what kind of crypto cryptocurrency and blockchain was um, providing in terms of value back into the world as well as the maybe the value it is or the negative value that it was adding to the world in terms of like our carbon footprint um, in part very particularly with f2 pool as as right it's the largest Bitcoin mining pool in the world it 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 was a um, situation in which right we all understood as infrastructure service providers that we did play a role in right the the type of energy being used specifically to mine POW POW coins. Um, and and also as a side note, I don't think that proof of stake need is either like necessarily off the hook, even though its carbon footprint is 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 very much smaller, but right it still makes some sort of uh, carbon footprint. So I think, right, I, I was just kind of having some conversations. I think we saw a lot of outcry from traditional artists when the NFT boom was kind of kicking off earlier of, of, of that. So we thought like, this is like a responsibility that we need to, to, to hold and to be stewards of. And especially as leaders in the space and the infrastructure service provider industry, I think that it was an opportunity for us to kind of show what we could do and that we do, did understand that it was, uh, uh, that it was important to, to, to proceed with. And so that's why I, right. Uh, a, a friend of mine who was just coincidentally a, like he was like a journalist for vice and he was talking about some of the work that he had been doing with and, and known about regen. 
um, as well as what um, we would have been seeing in the, the Cosmos ecosystem as well. Um, right, just kind of a lot of the pieces fell together. There was a lot of kind of, as we love to use the analogy, like a lot of Lego pieces that crypto provides in terms of the composability. Um, and so we started bringing these people together, especially like the experts who have had like years and years of kind of car carbon and climate industry experience with the blockchain experience that we've seen with that we have with like Gregory Landu at Regen, Joseph Planet, Blockchain for Climate, uh, Josh Bijak at Creole and Klima Dow. Um, yeah, that's a that's a bit of what, what we had started with. Thanks, Daniel. Um, that's fantastic context. Um, I'm just kind of going across my screen. Maybe I'll uh, see Joseph if you want to just chime in and share a little bit about um, your work on Bitmo and just and just how you see this larger initiative and its importance. And yeah, just anything really that you'd like to share. Absolutely, my pleasure. And uh, yeah, it's been uh, really neat to have Daniel's leadership and sort of pulling this group together. And I think something really, um, it's obvious, but like obvious in that best way that you wanna see stuff happen. And it usually doesn't in life um, where, you know, somebody working with F2 Pool and Steakfish is um, seeing the the imperative and and really leaning in, um, like with an open heart and an open mind and a lot of focus on getting some good stuff done. So huge props, Daniel's way, and um, it's uh, it's it's pretty amazing to be working with him, and it's amazing to be working with the team. Um, and so I come from initially from the climate space. Um, I've been working in carbon offset development since 2004. So I kind of come from like trad cli-fi, <laughs> traditional climate finance maybe. Nice. Um, and uh, and uh, so a focus on creating the environmental asset of a carbon offset. So how do we go about uh, arraying the, the ability, you know, people who can do real work on the ground, be that on the landscape or in the built environment or in renewable energy. Um, I have a big focus on uh, natural climate solutions, um, but creating the tools to basically pay the people who can get carbon out of the atmosphere to do the work to get the carbon out of the atmosphere because um, that takes money and deployment of real things in the real world. And so in my role in trying to create tools to turn action into offset, um, was really excited when I went down the crypto rabbit hole in 2017, learned about Ethereum, um, and just sort of saw the transformational power of this stuff. And and the, the focus that refined out for me was our work at Blockchain for Climate Foundation um, to put Paris Agreement carbon markets on the blockchain to enable cross-border collaboration on emission reductions and really try to, you know, as Daniel would say, take a run at the final boss of coordination failures um, and and help support the countries of the world who have signed on to the Paris Agreement to really operationalize the part that gets climate finance moving um, from sources of demand for emission reductions to the places with supply and that can deploy that capital. Um, and I've been fairly one pointed focused on on that work and kind of at the UN level um, and kind of as Daniel alluded to this spring saw the flurry of in interest around um, the climate impact of NFTs and then shifting over to the climate impact of Bitcoin really hitting the stage. And, um, you know, I, we've actually just had our second child and um, was trying to focus on that. But then, you know, I found a blockchain for climate foundation and so really had to weigh in. And as stuff kind of percolated out in that discussion, um, you know, it became clear that there's kind of a middle ground in between um, people who are saying, ah, Bitcoin's boiling the oceans and there's nothing possibly good that can come from crypto. Um, and a lot of people on the other side saying, nope, I'm a crypto fan and you can't say anything bad about my coin um, or I'll, I'll blow up. Um, and, you know, obviously there's there's some daylight in between there. And so um, really advocate for sort of you know quantify the impact reduce it where you can offset the rest and that's kind of our our mantra in climate finance and climate action sort of space and so i thought it applied really well 
to the issue of the climate impact of, of crypto and of, of proof of work coins in particular. Um, and so had noodled on the idea and was excited by people starting to offset um, you know, Bitcoin holders were starting to offset their portfolios. Um, we saw Nine Point Ventures out of Toronto. They have, a, um, I think, a Bitcoin ETF, and they just bought offsets um, to offset that. And that is great because they hold, you know, they know how much Bitcoin they have. Um, they have a source of, of capital to deploy. Um, and it was really exciting to start seeing that. So imagine my delight um, when I heard from Gregory and Joshua and Daniel and the team um, at, Block, at BitGoWG, Blockchain Infrastructure Offset Working Group, um, that they're actually trying to build a tool to natively make Bitcoin or other proof of work coins, but I think focusing on Bitcoin to start carbon neutral. Um, and rather than having to rely on, you know, this is my wallet full of Bitcoin and we've, you know, bought offsets and just kind of smash it together in an off-chain, on-chain realm um, to actually do some deep work into making a, uh, a native carbon neutral Bitcoin um, and arraying all of the pieces around that to create something that is incredibly carbon neutral, um, that's having a benefit to climate, um, and that is really working within sort of crypto economics um, to be something real with legs rather than just a novelty. And so really uh, a delight to be part of the team and um, a delight to be on the call today with you all to, to share some more of this with, with Twitter spaces. Love it. So uh, Josh, you want to jump in and uh, share your, uh, you, your personal, I guess, um, strategy for defeating the final boss? here uh, <laughs> of yeah to totally failure. yeah i mean it's i'm uh i'm an engineer so I, i'm i'm here to build stuff and and that's pretty much been my career the whole last few years uh built everything from mvps to production grid stuff in various environments under you know a number of, of accounts and people <laughs> i've worked for um, but most important, notably, like Creole was like the last thing we worked on the last three years. And it's been uh, a real interesting journey because we're, we're very product focused, but it's less on like uh, standards or whatever, like becoming like any sort of like body on, on something. And so by, by Calg or Bitco WG, as, as Joseph calls it, it's something that we're really proud of because it's something we got to contribute to, um, and be part of. But um for, for context, like I'm an environmental electrical engineer. So to me, a lot of this stuff is always something I'm very interested in. And, you know, at Creole, for, for what we built is we built a carbon neutral building control system. So basically carbon offsets itself in real time and, and it does it all on chain, verified, blah, blah, blah. Runs on smart contracts and you can't even tell. And so um, the next phase of it, obviously, is the final boss is what we realized really early on and we actually lost a lot of investors for uh, so when we told them that we wanted to, to build a DAO and they said, well, what the hell is that? Um, <laughs> so, you know, the next phase of what we're doing is, you know, is this is like you start with, you know, coordinating with people, you know, and, and, and working on things. And, um, and so in the, in the clean of DAO is where we're revising and helping quite a bit, you know, in our own expertise to make sure that that is, is built correctly. Um, but it's, it's, it is that like, it is all about, coordination and so for us to get there it's it's uh i think it took all that time for us to just meet all the right people and now i think you know the space has matured in such a way that we we know all the right people we know how to move things and we know how to put stuff together um and it's really just going to take you know we're working hard to to get us over the finish line awesome so um yeah i mean i think maybe it's worth um just sort of taking a moment to just contextualize uh, maybe i'll start with why i'm so stoked about this and then we can you know we can sort of go organically from there i'm you know i'm really fired up by this concept of a competition between monies money systems in which we're sort of have these competing axes of generate the most public good with the least negative externalities, right? And so if we think about Bitcoin competing against fiat currencies, which, you know, I, I don't think it's incorrect to say are sort of, at least the US dollar is sort of backed by, 
you know, its use as the Petro reserve currency, you know, maybe militarism and other things is really what it, it, the system is sort of backed up by. Bitcoin is backed up by sort of compute power and drawing energy. You know, what are the ways, A, that we might make, you know, sort of reform Bitcoin so that it produces less neg negative externalities? I think it is important to understand that I think all of us up here on stage believe that Bitcoin does have environmental impact, which should be acknowledged and mitigated, reduced and mitigated, right, in order to serve you know, and really in order to serve its value, not in order to like tear it down, but in order to adapt and upgrade so that Bitcoin and other currencies all can be more competitive to serve people's needs to have units of exchange and stores of value that really produce public goods and individual welfare without creating massive negative externalities, such as, you know, uh, accelerating climate change. And maybe even there's an ability for us, uh, this is where I get very excited, to create uh, money systems that actually are climate positive and carbon negative, meaning that every time there's an exchange taking place or the, the intrinsic value of that asset actually represents ecological health that's been increased and carbon that's been sequestered that is larger than the carbon that was emitted. And... I actually think that that we can apply a lot of the tools that we have available to just sort of bake that in to the system. And DeFi is, in my from my perspective, really the best place to do that. So the work that this working group has been working on, and Daniel really has been leading, to sort of create, a, <coughs> excuse me, a native offsetting mechanism and create sort of greened Bitcoin. Uh, is really, really exciting. Danny, do you want to talk a little bit of, uh, more about the concept of sort of a greened Bitcoin asset and where it fits in to the ecosystem? Yeah, sure. And I think I could also kind of piggyback off of what jo Joseph had mentioned about sort of like the crypto economics of like how certain things are, are motivated. Um, and, and I guess that we can get, we can, we can start from um, the, the motivations, let's say like when Gregory, you and I were having a lot of these conversations early on um, in December, 2020, where, right. We had, where I had this kind of like vision of yes, F2 pool. Um, uh, well, first of all, F2 pool as a mining pool and then F2, the mining farms and miners that contribute their computational hash power to F2 pool as a pool. They are, they are categorically different in their carbon um, emissions right f2 pool can maybe operates uh, like like servers that have a, a a relatively smaller carbon footprint than the actual miners and mining farms that are right have their devices on the ground connected to the electrical grid um and with what with whatever energy sources they're using renewable or, or non-renewable um but the, the concept was as like a first step um which we which we had internally termed like project eleonora was um, be able to first offset, um, uh, first measure car our carbon footprint as F2 pool, as an infrastructure service provider in the mining pool side, um, and, and as well as with, um, uh, with Stakefish, a validator service provider, which is also, right, right operates mainly on the cloud. Um, and, and at least take that step as an example, and then eventually potentially move to offsetting for the more environmental environmentally impactful carbon output um, that we had with like mining farms and miners. Um, so how, however, I think um, that initiative, uh, well, Project Lenora of just like completely um, by default offsetting ourselves, I think was maybe um, framed in a, a more difficult situation when you're kind of looking at it from like a business perspective. Um, and, and what I mean by that is um, like, what do you get out of um, offsetting yourself? Um, uh, especially when you want to like kind of maintain a competitive advantage over, over, over in, in your, in your environment. Um, and, and so it, like, yes, a company like F2 pool and Stakefish can just natively offset ourselves. We can purchase um, carbon credits, um, carbon offset credits in bulk, and then, right, feel satisfied, right? Uh, but what does that what does that end up meaning, right? We maybe 
um, have fulfilled some like ESG criteria goals. Um, but I think in the crypto ecosystem, that doesn't, there aren't necessarily strict regulations that we kind of have um, prompting us to do it. And um, let's say, right, backers or supporters or investors or LPs that kind of um, warrant us to do those types of fulfilling ESG criteria goals as Microsoft might, right? Microsoft has, as an example, is committed to going carbon negative, I believe. And it's right. It's no, it's no surprise that Bill Gates is right. The largest farmland holder in the United States, right. That can potentially be sources of carbon sequestration that will produce carbon credits that can be used for Microsoft to right offset themselves. Um, and, and so, right. It, it really brought, you know, the motivation of like, how, how can carbon credit offsetting for, for let's say cryptocurrency and blockchain infrastructure service providers, um, like F2 pool, like mining pools, and then also on the POS side, validators, um, be able to right, naturally, robustly, and, and resiliently continue to do this offsetting service. And so that brought us to kind of kind of brainstorm a lot. Uh, Greg, when Gregory and I were kind of keep jamming on this and, and talking about it, like, yes, and we kind of got to this sort of situation that Joseph had mentioned, right? Good behavior in this case was, right, us being us as a cryptocurrency ecosystem, first being able to recognize and understand that there is like an an emission problem that we have, carbon emissions problem that I don't think is not necessarily limited to just cryptocurrency, right? Every single industry has it. Like the aviation industry itself has like is almost like nine times more um, uh, of, a, of a carbon footprint. But right, if there is something that we are able to do, and I think in crypto in the cryptocurrency ecosystem, we have basic natively a very easy and and liquid and efficient way of being able to move um let's say assets assets around and be able to pair them and fractionalize them and and, and use them composably right good behavior in, in this turn is is carbon offsetting let's say and good, that good behavior cannot continue to just rely on altruism where Right. If F2 pool is feeling generous, we do off we do carbon offsets and we feel good about ourselves. But an, another mining pool might not, or another validator service provider might not, and, and that is not very robust or resilient. And so, in this case, right, good behavior has to be incentivized, or carbon offsetting has to be incentivized. And I think, and and it and it brings uh, it brought us back to kind of maybe the first principles of like how even in these decentralized and distributed systems, like how people, how these like anonymous, mostly anonymous and distributed and decentralized entities are coordinating with each other, uh, as Joshua had mentioned, uh, right? Especially in like these, in these situations of like, of, of DAOs that we've seen with like these uh, being amazing tools of decentralized consensus, decentralized synchronization and coordination, right? We, the, the common theme is, right, there is, a financial incentive that is prompting people to act a certain way and, and, and to use Bitcoin as an example, right? Like miners, like miners and mining farms that actually have, are, are, are doing the, the crazy hashing with, with their, with their specialized machines are incentivized to act well or behave well. And so in this case, the good behavior in, in Bitcoin is miners obeying the system um, and right, getting a reward, and and so when you and when you also take a look at that, right, their good behavior is incentivized, but then you also take you you can also see that in that good behavior is incentivized concept, right, Bitcoin miners, let's say maybe in the beginning in the early days, people were were beginning to mine because they believed in the system, right? Bitcoin has decentralized consensus, self sovereignty, censorship resistance. And miners are doing it altruistically, right? Because Bitcoin was was not worth much back then. But now I would I would even go as far as to say that like many Bitcoin miners and mining farms, their primary goal is may not necessarily be right the support of decentralization or self sovereignty or, or or censorship resistance, but their primary goal is right. They purchase expensive equipment, and their goal is to make money. And by, by their primary goals to make money and by means of making money, 
their secondary side effects are essentially all the benefits that we enjoy of Bitcoin or any other pr proof of work coin um, of right decentralization, self-sovereignty and censorship resistance. And, and for that, you kind of get into this uh, understanding of, yes, there's an incentivization layer that may be the primary goal of a, a particular actor to behave a certain way. And then you are getting these benefits out of that, um, that, that kind of ties everything together. And so in the same way, um, we found that, yes, we can, we can fra frame this now where, let's say, purchasing carbon, credit, cr carbon offset credits that are contributing to the sequestration of carbon uh, from the atmosphere, right, uh, around the whole planet, right, because this is something that we're kind of drawing from the traditional world, that should be incentivized. Um, and as, as Gregory had mentioned, right, it, being able to pair that, right, carbon credits carbon credits uh, um, that can be brought on chain, um, packaged up with like any crypto asset, let's say for example, in this case, Bitcoin. And then now that Bitcoin is, is, is green by, by being offset by a certain amount of carbon credit tons. And that green Bitcoin can exist as, right, as itself, like on a balance sheet. Let's say like, for example, if Grayscale had on his balance sheet and they, have, they are beholden to obeying and, and abiding by certain ESG criteria goals, they're satisfied, but even more, right? You have this concept of, right? You have these very valuable assets that can be used in, in, in DeFi, right? Or it can be used in borrowing and lending or collateralization schemes. And, and, and natively that itself is providing and generating extra yield beyond the premium that has been made from the carbon credits that were purchased and packaged there. And so that is kind of like the system, right? The ethos of like how even like, Right, the the consensus mechanisms and how they are 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 kind of held together um, is is what we've basically been designing at Bico WG, the blockchain infrastructure carbon offset working group, um, and so that is kind of like a, a long a, a long way of um, kind of describing describing that. But I, I will say, right, F two pool has has as well as with Stakefish has offset um, a lot of its uh, its carbon footprint. Right, we had done a a, for F2 Pool's eighth anniversary, um, right, there's a very famous Korean artist called Mr. Misung, and he created a custom piece for us, and a piece for us that we auctioned off and, and raised uh, upwards of, of around like $400,000 for the NFT sale, and they went into purchasing carbon credits, of which um, were sourced by, by, by Regen and also Creole uh, uh, from, from Joshua. Yeah. So, but in the end, I guess uh, Joseph definitely touched on this. Like, good in good behavior must be incentivized. Good behavior cannot uh, rely on altruism, um, and so that applies to like how we can think about um, right the the solutions to um, greening uh, crypto, I guess, and, and doing our part. Awesome. Yeah, super great. Um, anything, uh, Joseph or Josh, that you guys want to just, you know, th that's coming up as Daniel's speaking there, just to give you guys an opportunity? Yeah, I mean, I, I it's a, a mantra that basically echoes in the entire crypto space, you know, don't trust verify, but also it's all about game theory and incentives. <laughs> The, the best protocols and best designs and the stuff that we've seen over the last few years, like that came out of you know, the ICO craze and even before that, um, all came with proper stru properly structured incentives. And, you know, the same is true here. Like if you want to create green assets, you want to create stuff like the incentives have to make sense for people who actually want to participate in this. Doing it altruistically is, is only going to get you so far. Once you start creating like, really cool synthetic derivative assets and, and being able to create yield out of doing green behavior, like making green profitable is how you get it to be something that people actually want to do versus, um, you know, just, just relying on people feeling good about it. Yeah. And I think I like an add on point to this and it's, you know, it's neat looking at the great group of people in the spaces today and, um, it's kind of parsing where that line of altruism and like game theory and and economic incentives lie. 
because, you know, I would say for the folks on, you know, for the speakers, um, if I can speak for folks, and I imagine for a lot of folks on the, uh, in the space as well, we kind of straddle the line, right? Like we are, we do have an altruistic bent um, and a public goods bent, and we're trying to create things for the good of the space and also build a livelihood for ourselves. And so I think that there's a neat, like, there's a neat middle ground for people working on this to recognize the need to, you know, build a hard nosed effective tool that's going to live on its own two feet. Um, but that, you know, we put in blood, sweat and tears to make those things happen um, and to craft those. And I think that that's probably going to resonate for a lot of people here. So um, yeah, I, if, if it's appropriate for, um, you know, Gregory and the speakers to have, if we can have other people, if they've got questions, um, would be super interested in that. And yeah, I just want to kind of cheer folks that are um, working at this intersection of how to try to um, make the, the blockchain space more green um, and, you know, pick up the tools, pick up the money Legos um, that all these great folks have been building across a number of different protocols and put them to work. Totally. Uh, completely agree with all of that. Um, I'm. It's really an exciting moment, I think, because you sort of see the the crypto space maturing, so that we really do actually have a set of Legos to put together across multiple ecosystems. I think the I think the sort of rise of uh, a multi chain approach in the ecosystem is also really quite conducive to this moment because. You know, you don't necessarily need to force people onto a single chain. You can actually create, uh, you know, I'm very excited about the opportunity we have to create sort of a, a planetary accounting system that is made up of composable, you know, sovereign state machines or blockchains that are keeping accounting for particular nation states or particular corporate consortium um, or you know, independent groups. And I think that that just sort of fits the model. So I'm really sort of, I'm really excited about the role of, of IBC in this and the work that the Cosmos ecosystem has been doing and how that can plug in to the more mature tools in the Ethereum ecosystem and the liquidity there and how you see sort of Bitcoin leading the way. So it's really exciting to me how... Gregory, your connection is drifting a little bit there. Oh, sorry about that. Well, I'm... I'm just excited. Um, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna just pass on the baton over here to to uh, to our new doggy friend who hopped up onto stage. <laughs> Hi, folks. Maybe I'll jump in. Gregory, your um, your connectivity is a little is drifting there. Not sure if that's solvable. Not sure what's going on there, but I was just gonna pass it on to our our new friend with the uh, from uh, the Carbon Dow who hopped up here with the dog avatar. <laughs> hey, <yeah. laughs> thanks for uh, passing the baton. How's everybody doing? Uh, it's Harry from Carbon Dow. Um, yeah, I was, I was really this excited. This is one of the aspects of having people on the ground doing real things, sometimes out in, in remoter spaces. Um, Gregory, if you're hearing this, uh, your <laughs> connection was drifting. Um I could hear, I could hear our our friend. Was... Da Daniel, I wonder if you want to talk about some of the other folks that are that are a, a partner on this initiative, or not? Yeah, just so I, I think um, I can hear most people fine. Uh, I think Gregory had in, invited up um, someone from Carbon Dow, and perhaps that would be a really good transition into talking about some of the infrastructure that. I think carbon credits need um, to kind of be facilitated and bring out, be brought on chain, um, right? With KlimaDAO, with Bitmo, with with Regens, um, like Layer One solution, um, and also Carbon DAO. But yeah, maybe um, yeah, maybe the Carbon DAO. You can kind of uh, maybe introduce yourself. That'd be great. Uh oh, we, it looks like we lost him. Um, <laughs> well, if he comes back in, we'll we'll put him back up on stage. But yeah, I think like the NFT, um, 
like the infrastructure that's being built uh, for how carbon credits need to be represented on chain, particularly as NFTs, and then how liquidity needs to be uh, like li- like fractionalization and the li- liquidity liquidity of that is important for how carbon credits can be used natively for other assets, right? You can green your NFT, you can green ERC twenties, um, and how that works. But I think each of like both Regen, uh, Blockchain for Climates, Bitmo, and even Creole and Klimadao have you guys have each um, unique solutions there, right? Hey folks, sorry, I was thinking that other people's connection was drifting, but I'm in the middle of a big city and that was my connection that was drifting there. Sorry about that. <laughs> no worries. Yeah. yeah, so Daniel, your question here is to sort of dig in on a, a couple of the different approaches to how we're going to be representing carbon on chain and maybe some of the challenges around that. Is that kind of where you think? Yeah, the yeah exactly. Go? I awesome. think like we like we all have at, uh, in our working group sessions have been terming calling it like carbon credit tokenization entities, um, but yeah maybe I think maybe Josh would be a, would be a good could be first and then we can talk uh, with Joseph and Gregory but like, great Creole and Klima I think are are maybe a good good start yeah definitely so I can like to speak to the the Creole method and the way we've been doing it last couple of years and, and actually the way we did it for Eptopool. But basically <clears throat> our our thesis on, on this and you know something we discussed quite heavily in, in Bicog as well is that uh, if you bring tons on chain, you have to basically prevent double spend somehow. And so there's like many, many ways to prevent them. Uh, in our view and, and the way we were operating a couple of years ago and basically the state of the market and how we build things then was we basically retire them off chain take the retirement certificate and then bake that into an NFT that we then create. And the NFT we create are like a special purpose vehicle that basically also has a sub tokenization token within it and that you use to denote whether or not it's been offset. So the whole purpose and the way we designed it was actually for ourselves. It wasn't really in mind to any, to build for anything that scale or really anything other than ourselves. What we really wanted is we wanted the ability to micro offset because in building controls, like one LED bulb will consume a few grams of carbon a day. Like we're talking like super, super small amounts. So you need like super, super denotable uh, micro amounts to be, be able to do it. And and that's why we created it. I mean, obviously thinking about it now, like I would totally redesign it. <laughs> this is part of where like the Klima Dow, the, the guys at CO2 can are building, they're building like a totally different uh, approach to this because it's got a scale. And so, um, you know, we, we, we built it with that in mind of thinking, you know, okay, that, that's, that's generally what we want. Um, and that's how we do it now. Still, like, it all, it's all exists on Maddox. So, like, those 7,200 tons we did for, for Pool, those exist as individual NFTs. That each NFT owns its own sub-token ERC-20 contract. Those were completely retired. So, you can check the balances of those. Um, and you can see that those all those tons are basically, like, impossible to double spend at that point. Um, so we basically cho- chose the, this method that if you, if you retire off chain and then bring them on chain, it's the equivalent to moving it between markets. And basically, our thesis was saying that uh, blockchain is a valid market and people should recognize it as such. And so denoting it here under a, a different, you know, smart contract infrastructure that's not double spendable and you know totally accountable should be, you know, equivalent to how they do it in, in legacy systems. Um, now we've had lots of discussions I know, internally about like whether or not this is valid. And then of course the guys at, at um, Carbon Dow have a totally different thesis on this as well. Um, I know we talked we talked to them extensively and looked at their structure as well. And it's really cool. Like everyone got their own idea on what it should look like. And there are multiple solutions. Like this is, you know, to Gregory's point earlier, like if this is not about uh, one solution ruling them all, there's going to be many. And the point here is that you have to basically be able to account for all of them. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it's, uh, it's, it's up to basically how we do it now. And then we continue to, like, we have a lot of, we have a subscription system that people use. So like, if you know, sign up every month, we'll send you an offset um, based on like a, a, an average price on in your regions. So, like Europeans have to pay a lot less than Americans <laughs> because the average is a lot less. Um, but it, that's just the reality of it. And then there's uh, and then there's like a bunch of other things we've kind of done. But the the clean without stuff that we're pushing forward is going to be like a permissionless basket of assets that's basically moving out. So we will be able to 
interface and hopefully have like interoperability between you know stuff from IBC, um, the regen stuff, like you know all the stuff from Carbondale. Basically, anybody that's tokenizing carbon in some sort of meaningful fashion that you know meets a, a level of scrutiny that the, the carbon experts within that DAO see as as valid um, could be used. So, and, so, and that's the whole point: is you want to create markets on chain and then have them recognized as valid because markets on chain, as we all know, are extremely liquid. They have rapid price discovery, and and carbon has been suffering for for that you know those very simple reason. <laughs> completely like a liquid market in many instances it's opaque in its pricing like completely filled with middlemen who try and take cuts here and there you have no idea if the person actually selling the ton is getting any of the dollars that you're sending and um, and so this this will basically sidestep all of that and, and, and solve a lot of those problems i think that that approach to being able to ingest at climadao being able to ingest lots of different types of tokenized carbon credits is really interesting. Can you share more about like, is that gonna be like, it can ingest an ERC-721 or an ERC-20 um, or stuff from another chain? How do the mechanics of that work in, in spitting out its native asset on the other side? Yeah, so it's actually quite sophisticated um, and I can't take any credit for it because it was designed by a, a, a much more uh, big brain people at Olympus DAO. But basically, they came up with a mechanic for ingesting stable assets into their treasury and basically being able to take anything from DAI, USDT, USDC, whatever, like one US dollar stable coin into their treasury and basically issue currency as a result. I claim that we basically swapped that out, that, that mechanic for carbon, because you saw the actual mechanics there would make a lot of sense. Carbon has that same like intrinsic value that goes with it, and you can basically store it for a long time and do really great things with it as a result. And... So the ingestion is is actually um, a little bit more abstract. It's basically so any carbon tokenization system basically that, that does it. So in the case, let we take Creole as an example. So we basically create the ERC seven twenty one. You cannot trade a seven twenty one against a twenty on any sort of dex. That just doesn't work um, simply because of the mechanics of how pools get created and, and so on and so forth. So what you have to do is you take the seven twenty one and you create another contract which is like an indexer. And this indexer basically takes NFTs, deposits them and then spits out an ERC-20 that represents a denomination thereof. There are a couple examples of this uh, that already exist, one of them being NFTX, which actually Daniel showed me for the first time, which is pretty cool. Um, and it's, it's basically like you can take CryptoPunks, you deposit your punk, and then out on the other end, you get like a liquid ERC-20 that you can sell on, on the market. And so instead of you trying to figure out what your price of your NFT is worth, you can just go and take the market price. And it works the other way too. So you can deposit tokens and then get spit out NFT so you can arbitrage the price too. Like if you know there's a punk in there that's worth a few million and you want it, you can basically deposit and try and get, get it out. And the mechanics there are a little bit more nuanced because they use like a randomization system to get them. But in the case of carbon tons, you will get the same thing. So anyway, you get this tokenized index and this index is what trades against the actual underlying asset within the treasury. And this is how you basically can ingest any sort of carbon ton. It's because you basically create indexes of various carbon tons from all sorts of systems. And those indexes is what you accept inside the treasury. And then it also expands it to like another layer where you can create indexes of indexes and have like a super index. And that super index is like a levelized average across like three or four indexes. So you can have an index of forestry credits, you can have an index, index of ocean credits, you can have an index of uh, solar wind credits, you can have an index of, of uh, cook stove credits, whatever you want. And you can create your own kind of index there. And as long as you get accepted by the DAO, the DAO says, yep, we think those are valid, we're going to accept that, then they'll basically issue currency as a result. So what you're doing is you're creating a mechanism for people to curate carbon in a higher quality on their own, and then basically trade that in for a wider ecosystem. And so it, it's... Um, really interesting mechanic for a number of reasons, but also what it does is it creates the on-chain market at the same time because you're, you're providing this like place to store it. Whereas, you know, the, the current only use of carbon offsets is purely offsetting. There is no like yield generation mechanism. There is no extended value associated with any sort of derivative product. Even carbon futures are like a hard thing to really get right, even in traditional TradFi markets. Trad Clify, as, as I like to call them, Joseph, <laughs> stealing your terms. Um, they they don't have this 
composability because you can't create these kind of like types of indexes. It's, it's just not quite the same. And so now if you create this market on chain, you can then start to build yield generating assets out of carbon, which wasn't possible before. Like it was just one purpose offsetting and that's it. Whereas now you can be like, well, I can use this to back a currency. I can create a, a yield generating currency out of it. I can create, you know, loans based on those DeFi products like, you know, leverage, uh, you know, buy, you know, do all sorts of really interesting things that basically make use of a lot of the great infrastructure that has evolved in the last two years that is otherwise just totally usable, unusable in its current form. Well, that is so rad and uh, amazing to get a rundown on that. And um, I think a lot of that was ClimaDAO specific, but a lot of it, most of it is also super pertinent to um, the BICO WG <laughs> blockchain carbon offset work infrastructure working group. Um, because uh, in that case, we are um, creating, so we're working with a team called Seasons, and they're able to create um, albums, um, which is really sort of collections or portfolios of carbon credits. And they are, and so um, what is happening with our initiative is that the you will we'll be able to create different um, seasons albums, um, including sort of a regen focused one, a Klima DAO um, focused one, um, other sort of traditional offset space focused ones, uh, and then the um, green packaging entities, the people who are, are packaging up the Bitcoin uh, and the carbon credit are able to select from the album or the portfolio that really resonates for them or resonates for their clients, or they can make a mix and match to sort of get a portfolio of portfolios effect. Um, and so that's sort of some of the detail how um, credits will reach its ultimate, ultimate use in offsetting a Bitcoin. Um, and I will say it's pretty exciting as somebody from trad cli-fi, you know, where offsets have a really neat purpose and an amazing purpose, which is to offset an emission, um, to be able to feed this into a system like Josh was describing, both a Klima DAO and then also what's being worked on with Bitco WG um, to, you know, become a creature of DeFi, to be able to generate interest or yields and in that process create more demand for emission reduction outcomes, which become carbon credits, which become part of the system, um, as well as also, I think, from a marketplace perspective, for greener Bitcoin. Like if people can be selecting a high performing wrapped Bitcoin that's carbon neutral, um, I think that that's got a lot of legs, uh, which creates yield, offsets carbon, and fundamentally finances that work on the ground that, that we all rely upon to keep a healthy and safe climate. Carbon DAO. Yes. Hello. <laughs> yeah. It's really interesting listening to everybody in this space. Everybody's incredibly passionate, which is, is about sustainability. And we're all working on something, which is really exciting. Um, my background is working in sustainable startups, talking to businesses which are not sustainable and trying to convince them to be sustainable. So uh, it, it's a pleasure to speak to people who, uh, who are like-minded for once. Um, I'm, I'm interested in, in the conversation that we're having regarding Bitcoin and essentially sort of, if I'm understanding it correctly, sort of wrapping uh, a coin um, to, you know, in a, in a, in a, in a tokenized offset. Um, I'm hesitant. I'm curious. I think that I think I think we have um, I think we have examples of that. Um, what's it called? Uh, upco, upco, upco guys um, in the US. Yes. Um, I think I think I think it's exciting. I think that it's it's. I think one of the things that I'm doing uh, in my in my off-chain career is um, is selling sustainability, and everybody wants to preach about sustainability. Companies at the moment, um, you know, the best are, 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 are making commitments to 2025 net zero, which again is is pathetic because you can offset, you can do a project to measure, and then offset off-chain within 12 months. Um, but then you have companies also saying you know 2030, 2050, and when you're you're going to them and you're looking at their supply chain and you're trying to find, you know, you're trying to uh, discuss different ways of doing things and, and, and reducing and changing. There's, there's a hesitation to spend money. There's a hesitation to do something different if it costs more. Um, 
the change that we're seeing, which is all the reports which are exciting, which I think you know everybody in in, in the carbon markets is excited about, um, and is why we're all incredibly bullish. You know, the McKinsey reports are suggesting a 10x of the carbon market in the next 10 years and 100x in the next 30 years. Um, and this is all because companies are in, an increasing number of companies, as we were talking about earlier, which is Microsoft as an example, but an increasing number of companies are having to make these commitments, and it's not at the goodness of their heart, it costs them money. Um, potentially we could have some eccentric billionaires who are doing it, potentially doing it out of the goodness of heart, but the majority are not. The majority are doing it to appease the increasing customer demand. Um, and I think that that's linking into my thinking now uh, with wrapping a Bitcoin and potentially the better route or better route to go, um, or more effective route to go, could be um, sustainability Lego blocks. Um, and in, in building into, you know, building into, like, if you take NFTs, for example, you know, building into an NFT minting contract, the offsetting function, not just at the point of minting, but also every secondary sale. You know, we have royalty functions, you know, creating a royalty function where uh, half of your, your royalties goes towards um, buying um, on a Uniswap function, um, you know, the... Um, we will have different terms for it, but the tokenized pool, the index, um, ERC-20 for a carbon offset, sending it to a burn contract to execute the, the offsetting function. But essentially now creating a product, you know, you're creating an NFT product, which is now not just carbon neutral at the point of minting, but carbon neutral forever, right? And 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 instead of, instead of it being buy a green currency, it's like, hey, buy our product. You know, this is why the NFTs are so exciting I think it's cool, you know, like I've, I've got a nice cool top dog picture and I can see some crypto punks and it's, it's exciting. But it's not really exciting because if it for, for like the, 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 the DeFi community, right, it's, it's only exciting because it's, we, we finally got a use case. We finally got something that's selling. We finally got a product. We've got something that isn't just future potential. It's like right now. Right now, you can do something with this. We can have a product. And people are buying and spending a lot of money on a community, right? And it's a product that's sexy. It's a product that's attractive. Imagine if we can create uh, a toggle bar on Uniswap where you toggle it and every transaction you create. Or a green wallet where you, you have a toggle button that every transaction you do becomes carbon neutral. I think that creating a product oriented solution could be more effective for a consumer-driven market. That, that was, so... That oh. Go ahead. Go, well, yeah, I was just going to say, I think that that's, those are all fantastic points. I, I sort of want to point out a, a couple of key things. I, um, I think consumer driven is good and right and should be engaged with. And I, and I think that we, we've been having that conversation a lot. I also, I also want to point out that the reason that the Microsofts of the world are engaging and offsetting is not actually, at least from my perspective, it's sort of loosely correlated with consumer demand. It's not directly correlated. The reason that people now are engaging so aggressively with offsetting and claims is actually that there's been a shift over the last 18 months and it's now part of their fiduciary duty because Swiss reinsurance and the Bank of England and even the Fed and other people have said climate change is real and we're going to start uh, considering uh, carbon emissions as a liability on your balance sheet and you won't be insurable and you won't be eligible for loans if you're not offsetting. And that that's the real change that I, I think that's driving this just sort of like big landslide into aggressive, you know, not aggressive enough, but relative to what was going on before, aggressive net zero goals and other things. I think the same you know, the same is essentially true fundamentally the, at this stage of the game, from my perspective, the biggest drag at this stage to crypto adoption, uh, whether it's in, in the ETH community or Bitcoin, whether it's proof of work or proof of stake is actually sort of like the negative ESG FUD, the, 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 the truth and misconceptions around negative externalities associated with the use. And so, so it's great to put, to, to build tools. I think it's awesome to build tools for consumers to do offsetting and to build sort of meaning and commitment and engagement. 
But from my perspective, really sort of like driving price signals and creating structural change so that we can have new asset classes that are intrinsically climate positive and carbon negative is really, you know, it's, it's the Black Rocks. If the Black Rocks of the world say, I'm, say we're only going to buy, you know, offset Bitcoin, then there's, a, there's automatically a market premium and it's just going to get driven through the entire system. So that's sort of like a, a yes and. I agree with everything you're saying there. And I think there's sort of like this larger structural sort of macroeconomic reality that, that at least from my perspective is really important. And one of the things, just to sort of, you know, shill Regen briefly, one of the things that we've been working on for several years at Regen Network is domain-specific blockchain that's focused on all of those building blocks being accessible so that you can do all of the things you need to do with a blockchain that's that's custom built to be as close to the at the, the chain of attestations the curation and the governance that mints the highest quality natural capital assets in this case carbon credits and allows those to be the fundamental financial building blocks for the other sort of innovation whether it's customer and consumer driven or sort of macroeconomic and financial derivatives and instruments. So just, yeah, excited and maybe friendly, like slightly separate approach there. I, I also, uh, yeah, I, I think just to piggyback on um, what, what carbon now has been kind of speaking to is that, right. I think definitely like products are a, a very interesting path to getting adoption and making sure that, you know, certain things, let's say crypto assets, NFTs are greened and stay green um, at the transactional level. Um, there, there's this concept that I think um, we had been toying around with called like a green packaging entity where that, that process of, right, when an asset is greened, then, right, like a, a, a Bitcoin goes in and out comes a green Bitcoin that itself, uh, uh, that minting aspect is going to kind of start producing um, gr green assets. A as an example, like Ren, one of one of the the, the largest like you know wrapping uh, Bitcoin wrapping entities that brings assets on chain to Ethereum, for example, right? They they have kind of agreed to be be part of this and, and participate in this type of pilot system, where as, as you mentioned, right, there is a product. Right, that let's take for example, a green patch, packaging entity is a, is a product slash feature that existing entities that do native wrapping or also carbon sourcing can provide, where people can just go and then kind of there's a toggle where I want to green this and then it, and then it happens. I think what's also really interesting when you mentioned kind of like that the secondary transfers and royalties is that. Uh, Royalties uh, from from what we had been seeing, uh, let's say like from the NFT side, has has natively been uh, um, determined by let's say centralized platforms like like these marketplaces, where like if you do trade an NFT on OpenSea, then you can kind of set certain you can set certain um, uh, royalty structures. But if you do it off off that platform, those royalties, um, they don't ne necessarily exist. I think the closest that, that we've seen come to native on-chain royalty mechanisms has been o Euler Beats, where they just literally hard-coded into uh, to their contracts the royalties that would happen during certain transfers um, transfer, transfers like that. that and, and, and I think that is an, an, an important point because um, I, I see like Fungi Proof is here. Right. There was a, a situation where when we were kind of looking at trying to design the system for green packaging entities that would produce gr produce greening services, um, there, there are two paths that could be taken. One is where you in, in into the green packaging entity, let's say like this black box, which is not necessarily a black box, right? It's, it's going to be a completely transparent contract. But in goes like a unclean asset and out comes a greened asset, right? It, it's been green. And so the two paths that can be taken there is that out the output of a gr green packaging entity is a literally new asset that is like, let's say called, called green Bitcoin, has its own contract and it can be traced like that. 
And that tracing ability is, I think, the most important part of, of the solution that is, is going to be needed when you start implementing these, these sorts of systems that, that people are going to need to use when you are um, providing products and trading, trading services uh, where, where, wherever the asset is, is, is floating freely. The second part is if you don't create a new asset and you just have like a, a green uh, a, a green a green asset um, a, a greening asset where you kind of uh, like in goes a Bitcoin out comes the same Bitcoin but it's just been greened but how do you how are you able to prove that and track that that is something that um, that is a bit more difficult and 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 we had this con- this conversation with with with, with Fungi Proof who is, who's also part of the working group. And then they provide these great tracking tools, um, right, for grading NFTs as well. Is that it becomes a a graph theory problem that literally explodes into fractionalization ratios for for different wallets for 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 what happens. Like the concept itself of of greening something is simple, right? You can just think of it as right, and to to dive a little bit deeper into the technicals. Like a green Bitcoin goes in, a, a Bitcoin goes into a green packaging entity. You can think of it as like a shower, a shower stall. And then the water is like the carbon credits that come and like wash all the, right, the dirtiness of that, of that Bitcoin that has been mined with non-renewable energies, for example, n- renewable energy, for example. And the carbon credits do need to be, right, uh, as, as we, as, as most people call it, like retired or burned. And so that does like wash off and the carbon credits leave. And then the Bitcoin like steps out of that like you know proverbial shower stall and it comes out as itself. Like the tracking ability of that from its primary its its initial tra- its first transaction out of there is easy. But once you start that Bitcoin starts moving around, parts of that Bitcoin like zero point one of that full Bitcoin goes somewhere else. Zero point two of that Bitcoin goes 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 elsewhere. Then you have like uh, this difficulty of of tracking, which is virtually impossible. And it even gets worse when you start I- integrating mixers and black holes, like centralized exchanges that will, will not, will, will do things behind closed doors that you won't be able to track. And so it, it's like a, it becomes like a, a, a difficult s- solution. I think that um, products and services like, like you had mentioned um, that can natively do that uh, are definitely possible by, um, and they can be represented by the features that green packaging entities provide. And, and Ren Protocol ha- had also expressed that that is at the mint level that can be done as well, especially when it is a contract that kind of locks something up and then produces something else um, afterwards. And and just to tie that point up, right? Um, right. I I I had helped I had helped co-host um, the green NFT um, hackathon with with Art Gnome, Jason Bailey. And, and Gitcoin earlier, and there were a lot of sol- interesting solutions of how products, how how NFTs and and can be greened and at the product level exactly as you had described. So I, I know that is, is is something that has a lot of people are really excited about and working on. But, sorry, I went a little longer there, but <laughs> I, I I thought that was pretty. Cool. And the, yeah, thank thank you, thank you. Um, yeah, it's really interesting to hear. I think. Um, and I, I'm not, um, I'm not opposing. Um, I think that we're 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 all very aligned on this in this uh, space. Um, I think my one of my excitements, uh, w- one of the things that excites me about a more uh, product focused uh, or product leading uh, carbon offsetting is is choice. You know, we we, we all know how carb- not all you know not all carbon credits are created equal. Um, and one of the large components, you know, one of the large pieces when talking to, uh, you know, in, in off chain, talking to businesses about carbon offsetting is discussing the portfolio, you know, and, and it, one of the things which, which ends up happening is you have maybe three people, you know, you have your you know, head of sustainability or head of ESG, um, you have potentially the CEO who's most likely just signing it off and, and maybe one other like an operations manager uh, reviewing this portfolio. Um, and, and it's a really important component of offsetting, right? You know, not, not all carbon credits are created equal. Um, and we have so many different ways of doing carbon. You know, are we, are we talking just removal? Are we talking uh, reforestation, afforestation? 
are there specific types of projects or a specific uh, you know um you know different uh, different breakdowns of 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 portfolio you know how, how much do we want to be focusing on soil and how much do we want to be focusing on oceans and it's an interesting question and i think it's one which one of the things I'm excited about with 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 blockchains and DAOs, and especially all of the, all of the DAOs of these decentralized organizations or you know protocols, is bringing that choice to them. You know, if 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 we can imagine, a, say, a an offsetting uh, function built into your Uniswap that you can toggle, that you can you know as a as a as a user ch choose whether to uh, offset the transaction you're doing at that uh, at that current point. Um, but then have, you know, your unique, we're talking about all the indexes, right? You know, having your unique index rather than having this universal carbon uh, offset for a, um, for a Bitcoin or an Ethereum, but having rather these uh, protocol specifics, um, you know, ha have your DAO voting on which carbon product carbon products we're integrating now. You know, what, 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 what percentage of the portfolio is going to be? Um, for projects, I don't know, um, currently in X country or currently doing uh, Y. Um, and I think that that level of choice is, is an exciting, but also in a very, it's, it's, well, it's a very important component, but it's exciting that we can take that away from this, um, you know, the CEO, ESG manager and bring it to the users of any protocol. That's exactly. I yeah. Think it's an I, interesting. Joseph, I was going to ask you actually, because you had come up with um, really great standards there. Because what what you just said is that's almost exactly what I think is 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 very important, especially when it gets to like the the red the red criteria, right? Reducing emissions for deforestation, forest degradation, and 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 on. But yeah, Joseph, like exactly mm -hmm. what you, what you had been kind of designing in terms of the standards and in keeping it so that there is a diversity uh, of choice there. Right? If you could talk a little bit about that. Absolutely. Yeah. So offset selection and, and quality um, insurance, <laughs> Ian, ensuring it's the case um, is a, a huge issue in this, this space and a big focus of, of my off-chain work around carbon offset project development and also building standards and protocols. Um, and we're in an interesting space um, where there will be decision-making matrices laid down that drive this space for the next chunk of time and they'll continue to evolve but there is some you know stuff getting laid down um because of we have a diverse group of, of folks on our bitco wg team um we've got gregory and uh representing sort of the uh, the regen space and kind of regenerative agricultural and natural climate solutions um and really innovating and building the tools to enable the strong carbon quantification um, of these really important activities, um, uh, you know, has at least one clear type of, of activity that, that he really supports. Um, as Josh had mentioned, you know, he's an electrical engineer, has done amazing work with um, Creole and building automated um, offsetting into their building controls. Um, I come from the uh, trad cli-fi traditional climate finance space where I believe really heavily in the existing offset protocols like the verified carbon standard, gold standard, different compliance offset standards um, for the rigor that they put into what's required to create an offset. And um, a kind of, I think, elegant, simple way that we've um, up followed to make sure that everybody can engage in the space and be as maximalist about their particular favorite type of carbon credit or not um, is the approach that we were doing um, with with the seasons albums. Um, so rather than saying, you know, we're working on Bitco WG and there you have to, there's only one way to, to, to pick, you know, there's only one portfolio of offsets to pick or we've chosen one type of offset or five. Um, the seasons album approach um, basically will be setting requirements for um, you know, the minimum requirements to put a offset, a tokenized offset into the season's album. Um, but then the um, green packaging entity, the ba people basically wrapping the Bitcoin, they can make a decision which likely will interface with the market kind of on the far side of them around kind of what kind of credits they want to buy. Um, so if they are, you know, working over the counter with somebody who wants to buy a bunch of wrapped green Bitcoin, um, 
then uh, th that person could say, well, we really love regen type stuff, um, or we want building controls because that really matches with, you know, our space. Um, so they can select from that album um, and, uh, or they, the green packaging entity could, could pick a mix and match. Um, but I think that we want to have that clarity too around what that Bitcoin has been wrapped with um, so that people Joseph, I think we we may have lost your connection. Sorry. Uh, oh, I think I got lost as well. Uh, I guess to maybe when when he can get back a bit of what Joseph has been doing, as as he had mentioned with um, like the seasons albums, which is essentially like an NFT vault, and you can expose uh, a diversity of different sets of NFTs in them. Um, which in this case, the NFTs would be coming from different types of, of, of carbon, carbon, carbon projects, carbon sequestration projects, as you had mentioned, right? There's going to be like, you know, uh, a red, red plus carbon project from like Peru or, or Australia, et cetera, et cetera. And right. Different stakeholders who are going to be end users purchasing or wanting to get access to certain types of. Or, or let's say even types or slash flavors of carbon credit projects would be able to to just as easily create those NFT vaults uh, or as we call it, as as season calls it albums and then be able to right expose an ERC a liquid ERC twenty token that does determine what types of carbon project NFTs go into those vaults um, and then be governed and used as to like how they can be kind of exposed. So if you kind of like, um, I would actually love to kind of share some like this, uh, some of the diagrams that we've been designing um, uh, to, to, to describe this, but right, the flows of the types of carbon credit projects, right, as you had mentioned, they need to be somewhat vetted, right? There's obviously everyone has many different opinions of like what carbon credit projects are legitimate um, or not legitimate. There are like many registries that exist, like 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 VCS and, and more that determine like the quality, right? There's also like you, you can get even get into like the nitty gritty like vintages, um, and then what type of carbon sequestration that, that exists is it's it, it an already sequestered one, or is it a future sequestration um, depending on like the red classification. Um, and so those are important, right? The, the diversity of choice, but then also there needs to be, I guess, that type of mature understanding from people who do know, like yourself, like Gregory, like Joshua, and like and Joseph, who understand like what 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 is being the what type of carbon credits are being brought on chain and then being used. Um, perhaps that does lend to the types of of premiums that exist for greened assets. I, I mean, we, we use Bitcoin as an example, like green Bitcoin, um, but then also like right, NFTs, right? If NFTs can be offset and, and, and greened from their mint or their transaction, the, their subsequent transactions, like what type of carbon credit offset is associated with? Let's say I, I buy Beeple, right? And then I want to associate like specifically like uh, um, a, a carbon credit that comes from like the Mex like the, the, the coast of Mexico's like, um, uh, marshlands, right? That does carbon sequestration of those mangrove forests. That would be something that you can specifically choose um, and get the appropriate tonnage um, that has been notoriously hard to do um, from from the traditional world, because um, you'd have to like ex exclusively, specifically negotiate for for that type, versus when you can fractionalize it on chain and have much more efficiency to that liquidity. Um, yeah, I think. Oh, Joseph, I think. Yeah, it's been interesting. Bring you on again, but. Joseph, you're back. <laughs> I think. Oh, he's out. But... 
Hi there. Sorry, I'm back. I'm not exactly sure what went wrong there, but my apologies. I'm not sure how much of my, my monologue you guys caught um, in talking there, um, but was really just trying to cover that um, the, the Seasons albums allow us to curate a number of different types of portfolios. Um, and uh, then the green packaging entities who want to wrap that Bitcoin can make a decision based on their own criteria on market demand, on expert suggestion, um, on what ones to use. Um, but it helps sort of thread the needle on having a variety of credits included, um, but also being able to know what portfolio you're drawing from. I think that's I think that's key. Um, it's something it's, it's similar to, to to sort of what we're building with Carbon Dow. Our focus is um, uh, again um, uh, akin to what we were talking about before: um, tokenized um, off-chain carbon assets. Uh, key difference for us is we're 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 holding um, IRL carbon assets by Dow approved custodians rather than retiring, um, and then uh, NFT token. Um, ERC twenty tokenized version of that from a pool of um, a pool pool slash portfolio uh, of uh, securitized carbon credits. But our focus is about creating um, creating the functionality for DeFi projects uh, protocols uh, NFT. You know, if an artist uh, is creating their own NFT um, project, for example, we're, we're looking uh, we're discussing working with one of the uh, National Geographic um, photographers. Uh, and his in his second NFT drop, and he's looking at doing um, a, a large component of offsetting, uh, you know, extremely carbon negative, um, and then having that control over that portfolio at the user level, rather than um, you know, rather than at the level of of those um, uh, like like we were discussing before that we have off chain at the moment. You know, the, this devised by the, the the you know the ESG supervisors uh, CEO, um, but being able to hand that potentially curated, um, right? We're not we're not just onboarding, uh, you know, Sam's solar panels um, into a carbon credit, but you know, verified carbon credits, um, Vera certification or gold standard, um, but then allowing the DAOs of certain protocols, you know, so allowing the DAO to build their own index pool and allowing the control of that index pool, and giving that control to their DAO, um, equally so for the NFT users. And I think for us, the focus is about decentralizing that control um, over which projects need to get funded. Yeah, well, it's really cool to hear all these people moving into the space and, and building really neat tools for the system. And um you know, I think that that will benefit um, the type of thing that BitOWG is doing as well, um, because we are working on pulling together some of the money Legos there, the different tokenizing of carbon credits um, that different parties are doing, the Klima DAO is doing, that Regen Network's doing, our work at Blockchain for Climate. Um, and so picking up those Legos and, and putting them to a specific use. And, uh, you know, it's great to be working on, on this specific use for for green Bitcoin, and and I think folks can rest assured that the participants in this um, also have lots cooking and lots of exciting stuff coming next. Yeah, I, I'd love yeah. to open up the the floor for I guess question. We can have questions from the audience too. Um, I think Bon had requested to speak. Let's see if I could do this correctly. Bon, are you able to speak now? Is it working? Hi team. Are people hearing me now? <laughs> yes. I don't know why I can't un like re tell someone to become a speaker. <laughs> this is kind of difficult. Can, I guess, can you raise your hand? Does that, is that how it works? We need to add him as a speaker, I think. Are you able to accept speakers? 
either you, Daniel, or or Gregory. Yeah. I, I guess I, I think um, maybe if, if anyone has questions or, or or comments and stuff and would love to reach out, I think um, going to the Bico WG Twitter. Hi, folks. Just a little insight. I think that we're um, I think that we're getting ready to close the spaces. The space. Um, I believe that Gregory will, is um, having connectivity issues and needs to actually be the person to officially close the space as the host. Um, but um, really amazing to have everybody here today. Um, thank you so very much for listening in, lending your insights, lending the inspiration. Um, really excited by um, sort of the work of, of lots of folks that we recognize on the call here today. Um, and, and the work that we're doing, um, I definitely see off Cetra and, um, and their team here, um, lots of other really cool folks. So really appreciate your attendance today and uh, definitely watch, watch this space. And um, we'll be working to continue to communicate with the community um, about the progress of our work and, and what we, when we've got something live and ready to roll and you can go buy a wrap green Bitcoin. Yeah, and then reach out to each of us on on Twitter. I think Regen, Gregory, Creole, Bico, WG, Joshua, uh, and Joseph. I I I do believe I cannot end the call, even though I'm a host, host a co-host. I think uh, Gregory needs to end the call. But technology is hard. <laughs> we all use some of the most sophisticated financial technology, but we can't use Twitter Spaces. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even accept people to speak either. It's it's kind of weird, but um, I think it's at least at least partly spaces, um, but fun to have the technology option. Yeah. Can we all come to consensus to leave together? <laughs> That's how we we end the call. <laughs> <laughs> Collectively end it. I agree to end it. Here's my signature. Got it. Goodbye, folks.